The other day, a friend and I were talking politics, and he asked me what I thought the worst department of the government was. Given my politics, he was expecting me to answer with one of our intelligence agencies, like the FBI, the CIA, or the NSA. These are the departments that people here on YouTube seem to be most concerned about. Uh, well, I don't have much love for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, but that's just a personal position. Sometimes it's overstated, but there are legitimate concerns here. A lot of people on the right, particularly the Trump-supporting right, are especially bullish on the accusation that the Obama administration used the intelligence agencies to spy on the Trump campaign during the 2016 election. Trump's anti-globalist message and his vow to end unnecessary wars represents an existential threat to the deep state and the military industrial complex. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. That's why partisan intelligence agents keep leaking information. This is about the total sabotage of the Trump administration. Now the deep state has formed an alliance with the left to pick off Trump loyalists one by one. We've heard more and more over the last three years about the pernicious deep states. The president himself had even famously tweeted that the Obama administration had wiretapped Trump Tower. What actually happened there wasn't nearly as grand. But without opening that can of worms, I will say that the president using the FBI to harass his political opponents isn't unthinkable. In fact, it's happened plenty of times before. The earliest example I could find was during the Great Depression, when Herbert Hoover was president. An organization known as the Navy League released a pamphlet critical of the 31st president and his efforts to cut military spending in order to balance the budget. Despite the fact that Hoover had no evidence that the Navy League had broken any laws, he ordered the FBI to investigate the organization. The Navy League was hardly unique in this way. According to a study conducted by political scientist Craig Lloyd titled, Aggressive Introvert, a study of Herbert Hoover and the public relations management, President Hoover's staff maintained an informal blacklist of the president's critics, aggressively investigated press leaks, and used various arms of the government to collect dirt on his political opponents. Of course, the most famous example of the FBI's abuse was its investigation into the civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. The FBI investigated King and recorded audio tapes of his sexual indiscretions, which they sent to his wife, along with a letter telling Dr. King that he should kill himself. All of this because he was viewed as a political threat to the existing order. Historically speaking, there's a credible argument that our intelligence agencies present the greatest threat to our liberty. I suspect most people here on YouTube would say so. However, for my money, the worst government agency is actually the IRS. The IRS probably collects more information on you than any single intelligence agency does, and much more intimate information at that. Think about all the questions you have to answer when filing your taxes. All of that just to get back some of the money they took from you. There's a very long history of presidents abusing the IRS for political purposes as well. As David Burnham wrote in his book, A Law Unto Itself, The IRS and the Abuse of Power. In almost every administration since the IRS's inception, the information and power of the tax agency have been mobilized for explicitly political purposes. FDR used the IRS to harass newspaper publishers who were critical of the New Deal, including William Randolph Hearst and Moses Addenberg, publisher of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Soon after his inauguration, President Kennedy launched the Ideological Organizations Project, which issued targeted audits to people within right-leaning groups such as the Christian Anti-Communist Crusade, the American Enterprise Institute, and the Foundation for Economic Education. Kennedy also used the IRS to strong-arm companies into complying with supposedly voluntary price controls by singling out their executives for audits as well. According to a 1976 Senate Select Committee on Government Intelligence report, by directing tax audits at individuals and groups solely because because of their political beliefs. The Ideological Organization's audit project established a precedent for a far more elaborate program of targeting dissidents. During the Nixon administration, more than 10,000 individuals and groups were targeted for audits, particularly critics of the Vietnam War and members of the John Birch Society. Nixon was also known for illegally using information from tax returns against people on his famous enemies list. The Clinton administration did the same thing, targeting over 20 conservative groups like the Heritage Foundation and the American Spectator magazine for audits, as well as personal critics of the president like Jennifer Flowers and Paula Jones. I won't even get into what the Bush administration did, or talk about the 501c3 scandal during the Obama administration, but I highly recommend the book The Intimidation Game by Kimberly Strassel if you're interested. She really drives home the point about how the IRS can be used to silence political speech. And remember, all of these abuses happened in a country that has the First Amendment, which is supposed to protect your speech, and the Fourth Amendment, which is supposed to protect your privacy. Well, the problem with the IRS, or the intelligence agencies, isn't unique to them. I would argue that it's due 
due to the fact that they're bureaucracies. And if you want to regulate YouTube or any other tech company for that matter, it's going to require a bureaucracy to do so. The problem with government bureaucracy is that there's almost no accountability. People complain about YouTube being hard to deal with by itself, and there's certainly some truth to that. But YouTube, as a private company, could always go bust, and everything they do is an effort to keep that from happening. Government agencies, on the other hand, almost never go away. Once they exist, even if they no longer serve their intended purpose, they always manage to stick around. The people who work at these agencies are basically never held accountable, regardless of how bad at their jobs they are. According to a study conducted by USA Today, death, rather than poor performance, misconduct, or layoffs, is the primary threat to job security at the Environmental Protection Agency, the Small Business Administration, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Office of Management and Budget, and a dozen other deferral operations. The study showed that in 2010, the 168 federal workers in Washington, D.C. had a job security rate of 99.74%. When the Deepwater Horizon oil spill happened in the Gulf of Mexico, British Petroleum faced criminal and civil proceedings, not to mention enormous reputational damage. When the EPA accidentally dumped 1 million tons of toxic waste into the Animas River in Colorado, the agency refused to pay any damages and no one was even fired. There is simply never any accountability when you're dealing with federal bureaucracy. As we learned from the WikiLeaks ordeal, the only time anyone is ever punished is when you expose scandalous behavior. I have no doubt that the vast majority of people who work in federal bureaucracies are good people who take their jobs seriously, but it's simply in human nature that people who are walled off from accountability can become corrupt especially when each new president is charged with putting someone new at the head of each agency. The upside of corruption is that you please the new administration, and there's simply no downside because there's no accountability. Of course, these agencies are going to act out of self-reservation, rather than serve the public interest. It's not surprising that various parts of the government abuse their powers in such an environment, and I believe the same thing would happen if we regulated YouTube. I'm amazed at how some of the same people who rail against the deep state all of a sudden want the government to regulate YouTube and other tech companies, as if the same abuses won't happen. When are we going to see any kind of sensible regulations or laws to stop this? A lot of the people on the right accuse tech companies of being biased towards conservatives. That's overstated, but there likely is some truth in it. I hope that these people realize that Donald Trump isn't going to be president for forever. Let's look at the presidents in my lifetime. George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and now Donald Trump. I don't care who you are or what your politics are. There's something about at least one of those guys that you don't like. At least one of them you wouldn't trust to oversee tech companies to make sure they're playing fair. I don't want YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or Patreon or any other company to become an instrument of political discipline. And we should do what we can to prevent that from happening. Putting these companies under the boot of our political system is a virtual guarantee that it will. Mm -hmm.